Good morning from a very wet and gloomy day here in Japan. Today I am heading up back towards Nikko. Today I'm going to do a little more exploring in the area, this time by myself. Coming from Mayabashi, along this beautiful river right here, you, you kind of pass by this town that you, that's behind me right here. And it's a town called Ashio. And when you're driving by, the first thing you notice is just a bunch of just isolated, empty buildings and a town that looks like it's been forgotten, a town that looks empty. And each time I've gone to Nico, I've just driven by it. But today, I wanted to come back and walk around this little town and see what it's all about. Why is it so deserted? I mean, right here, look at this. <sighs> seen better days, seen better days. So I was looking on the map and looking on Google, and in this town, there is a copper mine that dates back to like 400 years old. And now it's just used as like a tourist attraction, but a copper mine that's 400 years old, I mean, that dates back to the Edo period, back to like the 1600s. And during that time and for the next 400 years, you can imagine this this part of town, this area was was thriving just because of all the jobs and and all the, you know, the money that it brought to this town. It is eerily quiet around here. I have absolutely no idea what this huge contraption is, this huge machine. Anyone knows what this is. I'm guessing it has to do something with the mining, I would imagine. And it looks super old. It's hard to tell if anybody's living here. You have some flowers and some pots up there. But not a whole lot of signs of life around here, that's for sure. It is quiet. So Japan isn't necessarily a very religious country. Yes, you have Buddhism and Shinto and a lot of shrines and temples everywhere, but it's not necessarily pushed upon the people. It's just kind of it's just kind of ingrained into the culture. And you know, just like this guy, he pulled up, took him maybe two minutes to get out of his car, walk up there, bow before he entered the shrine at the Tory gates. I went up there, probably gave a small offering, said a prayer, and then he left, went, ab went about his day. Doesn't look like I'm going in this one, but that's okay. Just want to come get a closer look. You can kind of see the medical mark right there. Maybe it was uh, the hospital for the copper mine. Just below me down here is, uh, I think, the uh, the copper mine attraction. <laughs> there is nobody there. I did see uh, a small family of three with their little kid walking down there so there are some people down there today but doesn't look like much is going on down there for sure do i want to spend eight dollars to go check it out to go check out the the copper mine of ashio 
Sure, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. It only costs about eight bucks. And uh, let's go learn some history about the, uh, the city of Ashio in Nikko. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's go check out the copper mine. See what it's all about. It looks like I have the place to myself. <laughs> see, is this what it looked like way back in the day? Let's go have a look. You got this beautiful red bridge that you see. See, that's the road up there when you're driving into Nikko. And across the river, you look into this town, Ashio. And it's a pretty sad sight for the most part. It wasn't actually too bad once I got closer and you know there was uh, a few apartment buildings that looked like it showed some signs of life but do I want to do this yeah fuck it let's do it I said I got 10 minutes. The train departs at 10.40. Let's have a look in here. Hi, hi, hi. Nikorasuke. Nikorasu. 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 Alright, so you just gotta make sure I don't have any symptoms. They take down my information. So I guess if they anything were to happen, they could just track me down. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Dangerous, your hands, feet, head. Keep them inside the train. That sign says it. This train track goes another 1,200 meters all the way in there. So let's go see what it was like to work in a copper mine. Hell, back in the 1600s, 1700s. It said this mine was found by two farmers. How does that happen? You just stumble across some copper or some ore or, and be like, oh yeah. We got some copper boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is being held up in here. Yeah. Definitely looks sturdy, doesn't it? One thing my little uh, English translated pamphlet failed to mention were the number of people that probably died in these mines. I could imagine hundreds and hundreds of people lost their lives working in here. By the look of that face, yeah. He's not enjoying himself, hell no. <laughs> A 
And there you have the uh, the beginning of the Meiji period with uh, electricity and thermal power and all that goodness, helping to help expedite the uh, output process. I learned all that in my little paintbook just now. Good stuff, good stuff. Man, I'm like crouching in this place. Look, if I stand up, I'm hitting my head. <laughs> Now we're in the Showa, Showa era. The guys are actually wearing proper masks to <laughs> help with the ventilation, I'm sure. So they weren't always working their ass off. They got to chill out and enjoy themselves and have a little break from time to time. I guess that's what uh, that display is trying to show. We got the Edo Jidai from 1600 to 1860 or so. The women in there breaking up the rocks. The men out here, I'm guessing putting it in this little furnace or whatever. But man, this guy over here hating his life. Yeah. That sucks. Oh, there's some English over here. Okay. That was in my pamphlet. I already read that. It's kind of hard to tell with the uh, the glare, but this looks like the uh, the ant maze that these uh, miners had to work in. Man, it went pretty far down. That was cool. That this last place right here, you kind of see how they turn the copper eventually into coins and into money, and uh, that looked like a very hard and uh, strenuous process too. Something you would not want to do. I tell you what. And of course, before you leave. They make you walk through the souvenir shop. Let's have a look around. And you walk out right over there. And so that was the Ashio copper mine for you. What'd you think? It's pretty cool, you know. I learned a little bit about copper mining today in the city of Ashio, and so that's the most important part. That's the most important part. So from here, I'm gonna head further into Nico. Gonna see what else I can find. It's starting to drizzle on me right now. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. That would suck, but. We are going to go into Nico and see what other random shit we can find. Join me on this very gray and gloomy day here in Tochigi. Let's do this. So up that road a little bit further is Ashio Station and the uh, city of Ashio. And I was just driving down the road, making my way towards Nico, and you see a lot of these unit-style old wooden houses just stretched all the way along the side of the road. And you can only imagine it. A lot of these houses were where the miners uh, used to call home. This is where they lived. Now, obviously, the, the mine has been closed for 50 years. I think, I think it said it closed in 1973. But this is where they would call home their families, their kids. They would raise their kids here and come home every day to, to this. Small kitchen. And let me show you the people that unfortunately had to call these places home. Let me show you where they use the restroom. Oh, wow. 
Look at that. How cool is that? I want to see what year that calendar is. And here you have the bathroom that I'm sure all the families that lived here had to share. How would you like to do that? How would you like to do that? I mean, there's at least four units right here. Probably another four right here. Back up in here, you can see these old houses over here. Been abandoned, forgotten for many years now. In that English translation that they gave me at the front, it said that Ashio at one point was the second most populated city in all of Tochigi. First being, of course, Utsunomiya, the capital. But this town used to be the most populated city, second most populated city in all of Tochigi Prefecture. But this, this is what you're left with. This is what you're left with. The antique right there. Again, when I go to these types of places, I always imagine what it was like when this place was full of life. When there was people everywhere, there was here, there'd be families, there'd be kids running around, enjoying themselves. I mean, you can see these kids' little remote control car. Wow, look at that thing. I love seeing stuff like this. The old cloth. The old designs. Do I want to see what's inside this though? This kind of gives you an idea of what this person that used to call this place home, what their style was. <laughs> they apparently like penguins. But again, there's two more rows down there of houses. I mean, I only saw I only showed you maybe two or three in there, but let's just continue down this road and see what else we can find on the outskirts of Ashio. One thing's for sure, they had incredibly pure water. Look how clean that is. Ah, it's so beautiful out here. <laughs> it is so beautiful out here. This. I don't know. It's kind of tragic. It's pretty sad. Again, it looks like more of the same. We got how many? Five different rows of houses. Each row looks like it has maybe three or four different units. Oh. Two thousand three. Two thousand three, but honestly. It is hard to imagine these were still lived in, in 2003. You still got the outhouses over here. You got four toilets right there. There's no way that in just 20, 18 years, they, uh, they succumb to this. Okay, I just had to climb up here real quick to have a good look. More the same, more the same. Ouch. That was sharp. But I'm out here. 
that's the road over there where that bridge is over there if you can see those cars that's kind of the main road I'm on the side road I'm on the side road and take the side roads in Japan because that's when you get to see cool shit like this if you consider this kind of stuff cool shit it's a funky tree and so here we go tank is still full three squatters man that is rough that is rough how would you like that wake up every morning say hello to your neighbor on the way to the toilet <laughs> yeah I think I found myself a lovely little area to grab lunch. I saw a sign that had a hamburger on it and it uh, looked like a, a cool little place to, to stop, so let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see what these hamburgers are all about. Inside of a train. Oh shit. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Just me, just one. one. Just yes. one. Three. Thank you. Can you speak Japanese? Uh, just a little bit. Okay, I'll do one so good. Ah, it's good. Just a little bit. Yes. Do you have a See that? The first day. Yeah. The first day. Awesome. How many customers today? What number am I? Number one. Well, there's one table. Number. There's a family than me. So, number two? I'm the second guest here. That is amazing. Okay. Uh, so, we got what kind of. Fish, fish burger. Fish burger. And beef, half pass, beef, beef. Okay. And the barbecue. Uh -oh. Chicken is It's already sold out. <laughs> okay. Let's see. The pork. Let's just try. Uh, let's try the, the fish burger. Okay. Fish burger. Let's go. Let's go. Let's so a fried potato day. Let's see what kind of view we got out here. I thought I was the second customer of the day. I guess it is. What time is it? It's 1.20. They were just uh, pulling my leg there, pulling my leg. Lovely place. Let's, uh, let's eat outside. Sounds like a good idea. ここ That was a YouTube fan. Not really. <laughs> Not really. She just uh want to come out here and speak to a foreigner is what it what it sounded like. I want to come out here, meet a good looking guy like myself, take a picture. But nice lady, nice lady. Zaymas. So, sauce. Sauce wa nani gari masu ka? Tartar sauce. Tartar sauce, okay. Oishi so. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Right, so we're all set. We got the fish burger with tartar sauce, some cabbage. Mm. And the fries that I've already eaten half of them. Hmm. They're kind of like the soggy fries if you uh, if you're into that, but they're nicely uh, salted. They're good. You know, they're kind of the, the limp ones, but they get the job done. And let's dig into this burger.
Mm. That's money. That's money. That's really good. Fish is nice and hot. The bread. It's kind of like a chewy, chewy bagel almost. It could be about twice as big though. That's for sure. Get the view of the beautiful mountains behind me. Look at that.